Welcome to part three of Let's Play Caverns of the Snow Witch by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 72. Uh, let's reread that paragraph as a reminder. Okay, um, you pretend to give up the fight and then suddenly leap at the illusionist. Catching him momentarily off guard, you manage to snatch the prism out of his hands and throw it on the floor. Or rather, and throw it onto the floor. It shatters into tiny pieces and the illusionist turns and flees into the skull mouth, screaming at the top of his voice. Smoke rises from the shattered fragments of the prism and forms itself into the shape of a bald fat man, a genie. Hovering in mid-air, he bows and thanks you for releasing him. He tells you that if you call on him, he will make you invisible, just once, as a token of his gratitude. Without saying another word, uh, the image shimmers and disappears. You now have to decide which way to head. Will you enter the tunnel to your left, turn to 266, enter the tunnel with the skull mouth, turn to 288, or enter the tunnel to your right, turn to 49? Okay, we're going to um, we're going to enter the tunnel with the skull mouth and turn to 288. Here we go. Uh, the, uh, the tunnel soon leads into another cavern where you see a huge white bearded man wearing white furs lifting a wooden chest onto a high shelf. He is a frost giant. There is only one other exit out of his lair via a tunnel in the opposite wall. If you wish to run through his lair into the tunnel opposite, turn to 243. If you wish to attack him, turn to 112. Okay, there's the frost giant. He's very muscular, he works out. Okay, we're going to attack him because we want what's in his chest, I think. Um, so turn to 112. Okay, if you have a sling and wish to use it against the frost giant, turn to 373. If you would rather fight him with your sword, turn to 292. Okay. Uh, now, before I go on, um, yeah, um, I did note down that I have the genie invisibility, um, and I also have a sling with three iron balls. Um, yeah, so we have a sling and wish to use it, so we're going to turn to 373. Let's do that now. Okay, uh, you place an iron ball in the sling and twirl it around your head before releasing it at the frost giant. Roll two dice. If the number of the total is the same or less than your skill score, turn to 12. If the total if the total is higher than your skill score, turn to 352. Okay, so we're going to roll two dice and we need it to be less than or equal to 12, which is a certainty. Um, that has a probability of 1, so therefore there's no actual point in rolling the dice, but I will do anyway. Oh look, I get 11, which is uncomfortably close, but doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, which is less than or equal to 12, so that's that. Let's remove the buzzing, because I can hear it this time. Um, and then let's turn to 12. And we also used, I remember 12, but we also used one of the balls. So I'll just say, um, one used... Move that, actually no, move that, and then go on a new uh, line. Anyway, we're going to 12, which is our skill, which is quite good. Um, here we are. Okay, the iron ball flies through the air and hits the frost giant on the temple. His huge frame crumples to the floor like a house of cards. Uh, the wooden chest he was lifting breaks open, spilling its contents. You find three ornate rings and a cracked bottle which emits a sweet, scented odour. It's not very nice killing him, is it? I mean, effectively, you just, you know, robbed him. So it's not very nice. Anyway, um, cracked bottle which emits a sweet, scented odour. If you wish to try on any of the rings, turn to 65. If you'd rather walk through to the next tunnel, turn to 338. Okay, um, 
anyway, so we have a... Well, it's a cracked bottle. Uh, it doesn't say we can take it, so I'll just say... Yeah, uh, anyway, we're going to try on some of the rings. So, 65. Having rubbed the bottle and sniffed your fingers, you decide that it is only perfume inside. Uh, you ex well, that explains that. Uh, you examine the three rings and decide which one to put on your finger. Will you put on the gold ring, turn to 21? Put on the silver ring, turn to 159? Or put on the copper ring, turn to 130? Who would have a copper ring? I mean, unless you're a plumber. Anyway, um, or, or some sort of builder, I don't know. Um, anyway, we're going to try on the... Uh, the gold ring, so turn to 21. You are now wearing a magic ring which will enable its wearer to resist the effects of freezing cold. Add one luck point. Okay, let's do that. So, first of all, let's write down gold ring. Um, we'll just say resists freezing cold. There we go. I'll just say wearer. There we go. Let's start a new line. It's a full stop. I don't want that. I wanted a comma. Good. And we have an extra luck point that puts us up to eight for finding the ring. Um, anyway, if you have not done so already, you may put on either the silver ring, turn to 159, or the copper ring, turn to 130. Alternatively, you may walk through to the next tunnel, turn to 338. Okay, we're going to try on the copper ring, so turn to 130. You are now wearing a magic ring which has the power to summon a warrior to your aid once only. Add one luck point. Okay, let's do that. So now we're up to nine luck. That's good, isn't it? And now we have a uh, copper ring. Um... Where uh, can summon a warrior once? There we go. Okay, brilliant. So we're up to nine luck. That was lucky. Okay, um, if you have not already done so, you may either put on the gold ring, turn to 21, or put on the silver ring, turn to 159. Alternatively, you may walk through to the next tunnel, turn to 338. Um, we're going to walk through to the next tunnel. We're going to leave the silver ring because it's nasty. Okay, 338, although how it's nasty, I can't remember. Anyway, 338. You soon arrive at a crossroads in the tunnel. However, you have no time to examine the left and right branches as a strange humanoid is advancing towards you from straight ahead. Turn to 59. Okay, before you stands a crystal warrior, one of the Snow Witch's personal guardians who has been sent to deal with you. He is made of quartz, which has been animated by the Snow Witch's sorcery. Uh, edged weapons will not harm the crystal warrior. Your sword is useless. If you possess a warhammer, you may succeed in smashing the crystal warrior to pieces. Crystal warrior, skill 11, stamina 13. If you do not possess a warhammer, turn to 2. If you win, Turn to 148. Okay, we do not have a Warhammer, so we're going to turn to 2. So off we go to 2. If you rescue the genie from the prism, you may call on him now. Turn to 14. If you did not rescue the genie, you have no defence against the crushing blows of the Crystal Warrior, and your quest is over. Luckily we... Um, Luckily, we did rescue the genie, so let's turn to 14. Now, the genie appears hovering above the crystal warrior. He snaps his fingers, and you immediately become invisible. The crystal warrior punches the air with his rough quartz fists, but you are able to slip by him unnoticed. By the time the invisibility spell wears off, you are well away from your adversary. Further on, uh, the tunnel ends at a T-junction. If you wish to go left, turn to 150. If you wish to go right, turn to 368. I'm glad I didn't have to fight that Crystal Warrior, because he had quite strong skill. Anyway, so 368. That was good. So we've used the Genie. 
Um, I'll just put in here more parentheses used. There we go. Whoops. Used. So I know I've used it. Okay. And we are turning to 368. The tunnel ends at a wooden door which is locked. You press your ear to it and hear the sound of feet slowly shuffling across the floor. If you wish to knock on the door, turn to 83. If you'd rather return to the junction and head straight on, turn to 150. Um. Yeah, we're going to knock on the door and turn to 83. A man comes to the door. His skin is a sickly grey-white colour. His vacant eyes and slow movements are definitely are definitely those of a mindless zombie. If you wish to attack him, turn to 62. If you wish to run back to the junction and head straight on, turn to 150. Now, spare with me just for one moment, please. Um, I'm back at paragraph 14. Um, I can't remember if I said that, yeah, you need to go right. That's what I did. I turned to paragraph 368. Um, I forgot to mention that. I might have just... I can't remember what I said, but I might have just said, let's go to 368. I meant to say, if I didn't, let's go right and turn to 368. So, I can't remember where I was now. Anyway, 368. So we're going right after we escape the uh, the Crystal Warrior using the invisibility. Um, yeah, that's what that was, wasn't it? Sorry about this. Yeah, so we, uh, uh, so we're going right after the the genie helps us, and um, yeah, and then we're knocking on the door, which leads us to the zombie, which is 83. Okay, good. Sorry about that. I got confused there. Um, anyway, so if you wish to attack him, turn to turn to. Turn to 62. If you wish to run back to the junction and head straight on, turn uh, to 150. Okay. Um, we are going to attack the zombie, so turn to 62. There he is in all his zombie glory. Nice, nice though that he's wearing a belt. You know, he's, he's concerned, you know, just in case his, his uh, trousers might fall down. You know, that, um, even though he's dead, he, he still has modesty. Anyway, yes, I know he could have died with the belt on, blah, blah, blah. I know, I'm only making a joke. Anyway, 62. Uh, we're going to... Uh yeah, we're going to fight the zombie. The zombie picks up a club from behind the door and shuffles forward to fight you. Forwards to fight you. Forwards with an S. Um, zombie skill 6, stamina 6. If you win, turn to 200. You may escape after two attack rounds by running back to the junction... And going straight on down the tunnel, turn to 150. Anyway, zombie 6-6. Six, six. Let's do this. I don't know why you'd want to escape such an easy battle, I don't know. Considering that we just, you know, defeated a crystal warrior who had skill 11, and the yeti that was skill 11 or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, so we're rolling for him first. Um, 6 plus 7 is 13. And I get 21. So 13 to 21. Um, yep, yeah, that puts him down to 4. Okay, he gets 5, that's 11. I get 8, that's 20. So 11 to 20. Puts him down to 2. I'll do that first. 11 to 20. Possibly the last one. You get 6, that's um, uh, 12. Sorry, I should have remember, was the last one 5, yeah. Anyway, this is 12, and I get 16. So 12 to 16, that was about the closest it got. But a comfortable win, regardless. Okay, so naught. I didn't even realise that some people stupidly say irregardless. I didn't even realise that until I... Uh, until I found out about that mistake, you know, 
you know, they're obviously confusing it with irrespective, because that means regardless, but um, irregardless doesn't logically mean anything, because regardless means, you know, the opposite of regarding. So you wouldn't need to put an ira there to negate regardless. If anything, it should be irregarding, if that were a word. But So irregardless makes no sense, logically. So it should either be regardless or irrespective. Anyway, um, anyway, we defeat the zombies, that's that. Get rid of the buzzing, and we're back. Okay, so we won, so let's turn to 200. 500. Okay, here we go. The zombie was probably in charge of the storeroom that the, um, into which the door opens. Jars and bottles... I mean, what a silly thing, putting a zombie in charge of that. Uh, jars and bottles of various shapes and sizes line the walls, and many boxes and barrels are, s are stacked up on the floor. You search quickly through them and find little of interest except for a, for a jar of ground minotaur horn, some garlic, a box full of teeth, a jar of pickled lizard's tails, and four large dragon eggs. As you will not be able to fit everything into your backpack, you may only take three of the items. Leaving the room, you walk back to the junction and head straight on down the tunnel. Turn to 150. Okay, we're going to take the garlic, uh, the ground minotaur horn, and the dragon's eggs. We don't need the teeth or the lizard's tails. Um, anyway, so garlic, minotaur horn, and dragon eggs. Let's write that down, or type it down, whatever. Okay, so ground minotaur horn. I don't know how they managed to get that. Um, garlic. And four large uh, dragon eggs. Were they free range? That's what I want to know. Are they better poached or uh, scrambled? Whatever, who cares? Anyway, um, let's go to 150 now. The tunnel ends at a wooden door which opens when you turn the handle. You walk into into a massive high ceilinged chamber, which I've never seen that word but used before, a uh, high ceilinged uh, chamber which ends in a wall of ice. In the centre of the chamber is an open marble sarcophagus with its lid propped up against its side. A white rat suddenly jumps out of the sarcophagus and runs towards you. It stops in front of you and starts to grow and change shape. If you possess any ground minotaur horn, turn to 52. If you do not, turn to 223. Okay, um, we do have some ground minotaur horn because we just picked it up, so let's go to 52. Okay, Wild Hill Man, let's ignore him. He looks like a barrel of laughs. Um, anyway, 52. Uh, you remember an old legend that ground minotaur horn is the only substance that can stop a metamorphosis spell from working. You quickly sprinkle some on the growing creature and relax a little as it shrinks back to a white rat again. The legend was true. Intrigued by the open sarcophagus, you decide to walk over and examine it. Turn to 297. 297, here we go. As you approach the sarcophagus, a woman's eerie laughter echoes round the chamber. A beautiful woman wearing white fur slowly rises out of the sarcophagus, and when she smiles, you see the telltale fangs and realise with horror that the Snow Witch is a vampire. If you have some garlic, turn to 210. If you do not, if you do not have any garlic, turn to 60. Oh, she's drooling, and she has a nose ring as well. Wonderful. I've, I've, I think I've said this once, but I, I will say it again, and I will continue to say it. Why do women think those are attractive? Because they're really not. They really are not attractive at all. You know, they just look horrible. Anyway, um. And those sort of studs they put on their noses, you know, little jewels, that just makes them look like they have a wart, which uh, coincidentally makes them look like a witch. Anyway, anyway, um, 
Yes, we have some garlics. Let's turn to 210. I'd just better say that the garlic has been used and the other thing's been used. So used and used. There we go. Okie dokie. Let's turn to 210. Yep, 210. The Snow Witch recoils from the garlic, giving you time to think. You know that a vampire can only be killed by driving a stake through its heart. If you possess a carved rune stick, turn to 34. If not, turn to 10. Okay, we do have a carved rune stick. Um, where is it? Yep, there it is, rune stick. So I'll just say used. I will just put in here that it was carved as well, just for... Uh, completion's sake. There we go. And let's turn to 34 and use it. Taking the stick from your backpack, you thrust it at the heart of the Snow Witch. If your skill is higher than 10, turn to 4. If your skill is 10 or less, turn to 123. Okay, I think... If your skill is higher than 10, then we're successful. If your skill is 10 or less, I think we have to test our skill. And if we fail, then we die. But luckily, we don't have to do that because our skill is 12. That's another reason why I recommend skill 10 or higher for this book. Um, so, that again, puts, uh, you know, what they said at the start about, you know the best routes anyone even with the worst dice rolls or whatever should be able to get through the book fairly easily nonsense <laughs> anyway if you're yeah anyway so skill is higher than 10 if your skill is higher than 10 turn to 4 so let's turn to 4 because our skill is 12 whoops that's the cover here it is uh, the stake pierces the snow witch's heart and her death Whale makes you shudder. She starts to decompose, and soon all that is left is a pile of dust on the floor. You see a vague shape in the wall of in the wall of ice at the end of the chamber, and decide to investigate. Turn to 235. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? The whole whole book is about the Snow Witch, and uh, and now we've killed her. That, that's the end of that. Um, anyway, turn to 235. Okay, you see, fro uh, you see frozen into the ice wall an ornate trunk open and filled with golden jewels. You hack away at the ice until you reach the trunk. A golden idol is the first thing you pick up, but suddenly it bursts out of your hands and changes into a golden warrior, a centaur. Yep. A sentinel, rather. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it changes into a golden warrior, a sentinel, not a sentinel. A sentinel left to guard the treasure. Sentinel, skill 9, stamina 9. If you win, turn to, turn to 171. Okay, so there is the sentinel. It's very similar to the diamond sentinel that was in Return to Firetop Mountain, or Return of, or no, or Legend of Zagor. I think it was Return to Firetop Mountain, Ian Livingstone's book. You know, one of the first of Ian Livingstone's sequels to Warlock of Firetop Mountain. The second one was Legend of Zagor, which isn't as good. Oh, well, neither is as good as the first one, but you know. Legend of Zagor is definitely the worst of the three, if you ask me. Anyway, but I think the Diamond Sentinel was on uh, Return to Firetop Mountain. Uh, it could have been on Legend of Zagor, but I'm pretty sure it was Return to Firetop Mountain. If I'm wrong, then correct me, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, so Sentinel, Skill 9, Stamina 9, let's do this. Better just make a copy of this, because otherwise it will uh, have to I'll type it all out again. There we go, good. Right, okay, so Sentinel. Sen no, I put, I've, I've put Sent... Yeah, that's, that's how you spell it, sorry. Uh, nine, I thought I misspelled it. Nine and nine. Okay, so we're doing for him first. Let's go, so nine plus... Um, eight is seventeen, and I get sixteen. Wonderful, good start. So seventeen to sixteen... 
he uh, hurts me. That puts me down to 17 stamina. Okay, next do it again. He gets a 3, that's uh, 12. I get 10, that's 22. That's more like it. So 12 to 22, but the uh, big difference there doesn't make any difference. Still only two hit points there. Um, that are taken off. Okay, next. 7, that's uh, 16 to 23. So 16 to 23. That puts him down to 5. Okay, um, 8, that's uh, 17, and I get uh, 19. So 17 to 19. Uh, 17 to 19. Um, yeah, some people leave leave comments on some of my other gamebook videos and said, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't I do that? The answer is always, because I forgot. I can't remember to do everything in this book. I always forget that I could have used some sort of bit of equipment, and usually it's... It's something that makes not using it or forgetting to use it makes it harder for me. So I don't mind too much that I forget to do something because it made it harder for me. But that's always the reason because I, I just forgot uh, to use a certain item. If I do, my apologies. Um, I can't remember to do everything. Um, yeah, so that's that. Anyway, so we're down to three now. Um, nine, that's 18. 8, that's 20, so 18 to 20, I win again. Good. Although that one was uncomfortably close. Um, 4, that's 13, 5, that's 17. So 13 to 17, and I defeat the Sentinel. Although he did get a hit off on me. 17, there we go. Again, no luck used. Okay, remove the annoyance. There we go, get rid of the buzzing. Don't know if you can hear that, but I certainly can, and it's tremendously irritating. Okay, so we won. That's 10 to 171. Yeah. 171, sorry about that. Just reading my notes. Um, okay. The guardian of the Snow Witch's treasure is dead and you are free to help yourself to her riches. Although there is a limit to how much you can carry, you decide to fill your backpack with gold pieces and you count 600 in all. Blimey. Um, 600 gold pieces, that'll weigh a ton, probably. And not, um, and not the silly metric ton, or not even the American short ton, which is only 2,000 pounds. The manly British ton, which is 2,240 pounds. Okay, um... Anyway, uh, you decide to fill your backpack with gold pieces and you cannot and, and you count 600 in all. However, for each 50 you take, you will have to remove one item from your backpack and leave it behind. Adjust your equipment list accordingly. Okay, um... Okay, yeah, so yeah, so we can have 50 gold pieces for each item that we remove, so um, um, okay, bear with me, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, um, what I'm going to get rid of is the um well I've used all that stuff so I mean it's pretty ridiculous if I have fewer than six items then surely that means I can just get the gold anyway I mean um well, I don't really need the cloak anymore so I can just lose that so Gone, I'll just put gone. Um, I need that amulet of courage. Um, oh, sod it. I won't need the gold anyway, so I'll just say, yeah, I've got rid of that and I'll get 50 gold. There we go, 50 gold pieces. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. 
Um, yeah, so that, uh, that'll do for that. Okay, so, uh, where was I? Don't know where I was now. Oh, here we are. Uh, how, um, yeah. Just as you finish filling your backpack, you hear the sound of running feet coming down the tunnel towards the chamber. Um, my chamber door. Um, sorry, that was a Simpsons Edgar Allan Poe reference. Um, you stand up and draw your sword, wondering if you can survive much more hard combat. Two men suddenly appear at the door. A dwarf... Well, they're not men then, are they? Because it's a dwarf and an elf, they're not men. Uh, by definition. Anyway, two men suddenly appear at the door, a dwarf and an elf, but they do not look as though they are about to attack you. They are smiling broadly, and they both try to speak at once, the elf finally taking command. You have killed her. We are free. We will soon be able to take off our obedience collars. Now we wish to repay you, friend, by helping you to escape. You cannot leave the caverns by the way you came, because the Snow Witch's followers are waiting for you, and the tunnels are alive with goblins. Right, OK, but they said... The elf from earlier said... Okay, well, I sort of got the impression that the Snow Witch didn't have any followers, but she had to make people become her followers by using the, the obedience collars. So I'm sort of a bit confused that there are she does actually have real followers who genuinely want to follow her. Because I thought I assumed I don't know whether it was in, whether it were implied or not, but I inferred definitely that uh, all her followers were, you know, wearing obedience collars. But I'm probably wrong. Anyway. Um, are waiting for you, and the tunnels are alive with goblins. Our fellow elves and dwarves, uh, dwarfs are a lot, are battling against them now to uh, to give you time to flee. We must waste no more time. To your surprise, the elf walks straight towards the cavern wall opposite the door and appears to pass right through it. Another of the Snow Witch's illusions, comments the dwarf, an escape route she never got the chance to use. The trouble is, we've never used it either. The dwarf laughs to himself and walks towards the wall, you, uh, you following behind. Walking towards, uh, walking through the illusion, you find yourself in a narrow, torch-lit tunnel, which you walk down, or rather down which you walk in single file. It soon ends at a junction, and you discuss which way to turn. If you wish to turn left, turn to 61. If you would rather turn right, turn to 388. Okay, we are going to go left, so let's turn to 61. As you walk along, the elf introduces him, uh, the elf introduces himself. My name is Red Swift, and he is known as Stub. He says, pointing to the smiling dwarf. We met here as slaves in the service of the vile Snow Witch. Uh, we both now hope to return to our villages. I live in the Moonstone Hills, and, and Stub comes from Stonebridge. If we manage to escape from these infernal caverns, you are more than welcome to come and stay with us. Stonebridge is on the way to my village in the hills. It's also a long way off. Uh, before Red Swift can continue, Stub shouts and points to an orb lying on the floor. It is made of glass, and in the torchlight it seems to glow with swirling colours. Leave it, commands Red Swift. We do not need it, and it could be a trap. If you wish to ignore Red Swift's advice and pick up the orb, turn to 48. If you would rather keep on walking, turn to 166. Okay, we're going to ignore Red Swift and pick up the orb, turn to 48. Okay, when you pick it up, the orb starts to get warmer and its colours change rapidly and swirl around. Red, Red Swift and Stub back away, telling you to put it down. Will you keep hold of the orb, turn to 275, place it gently on the floor, turn to 117, or throw it down the tunnel, turn to 318? We're going to keep holding the orb and turn to 275. Determined to discover the secret of the orb, you hold it in your outstretched hands. Its warmth starts to creep up your arms, and soon you are glowing all over, and feeling warmer than you have been for weeks. Add three stamina points and one luck point. Haha, <laughs> Red Swift. We were right all along. Three stamina points, that puts me up to 20, that's good. Four away from maximum. Only two, and the ma maximum luck now again, which is really good. Um, you assure Red Swift and Stub that this orb of energy will warm them too, and they nervously pass it between them. In good spirits, you place the orb back on the floor and continue down the tunnel to 166. Why not take it with you? It seems really valuable. You could use it again. Yeah, but what do I know? No, I've... I've, I've I've just found the secret to eternal warmth in a freezing cold mountain or whatever. Now I'll just leave it there. Oh dear. Anyway, after walking for another five minutes, 
and the tunnel turns sharply right and right again a few yards further on. You soon arrive at a junction and after discussion you decide to turn left rather than continue straight on. Turn to 259. Placed against the left-hand wall of the tunnel, you see a large iron casket with a brass handle in the shape of a serpent. No one volunteers to open the casket, so you decide to draw lots. Roll one die. If you roll a 1 or 2, turn to 73. If you roll a 3 or 4, turn to 196. If you roll a 5 or 6, turn to 353. Okay, and we are going to do that next time. So... 259 is my next paragraph, if I don't forget. I usually do, because the uh, Foxit reader sort of saves the points I was at on the PDF. But just in case I don't, I'll write 259 down. Anyway, so that's that. We will uh, roll one die next time. So thanks for watching, and, and goodbye.